Hey, today's going to be a little different in that I'm not talking about a game I have played, I'm talking about a game I'm going to play very soon, Starfield. This is a game I'm definitely excited for. I was excited for this when they announced it, but I haven't watched a lot of the trailers. I've watched one or two, kind of kept up with some of the news about like, gameplay happenings and all that, so I know a little bit about the game. But I'm mostly blind from a lot of the stuff they've shown in the trailers. In regards to, like, story stuff or locations. Uh, but I know some of the mechanics. So we are, we are not quite on the eve of Starfield, but we're getting close. It was announced at the same E3 as The Elder Scrolls VI, right? I think it might have been. It was like maybe five years ago, four years ago. I don't know. We are roughly around the eve of Starfield coming out and being in the hands of players. And I feel like this is the type of game where people get a lot in their heads. They have a lot of perceptions about the what the game will be. And I thought it'd be cool just to get my personalized idea out there of what Starfield... I want Starfield to be what I hope will be in the game. Now, of course, maybe my, you know, hopes and desires for Starfield will be different from yours. It'll definitely be a, at least a tiny bit different from what the game actually is. Just the way things work, it's not going to be exactly how I imagine it. But, you know, just some of the broad strokes, I hope they tackle some of these ideas or... At the very least, this is just what I expect what I hope to see in Starfield. Yeah, just keep in mind that I haven't seen all the trailers. I don't... So some of the stuff I might talk about might have already been addressed, or you might have seen it. Or maybe my expectations would be slightly shifted around if I had seen the trailers, or some of the news articles or whatever. But regardless, let's get into my hopes for Starfield. So, uh, we'll start off with the biggest thing for a Bethesda game, and it's the world. What are my hopes for the world of Starfield? Well, I guess first of all, it's not just a world, it's worlds. You know, there's, I saw that there's like a thousand planets in this game. That is so different from what they've done in previous games where, you know, in Skyrim, it's just, this is the land of Skyrim. Or in Oblivion, this is Cyrodiil. Or in Fallout 4, this is the Commonwealth. Boston, the United States. That's this area. But with Starfield, it's like, no, there's a thousand different planets. And, you know, when, when you hear a thousand planets, n not all of those are handcrafted, obviously. There's going to be some procedural generation here. You know, not everything. This isn't a no man's sky. It's still like, as I understand it, there's still going to be a lot of handcrafted stuff. Like, there's going to be handcrafted locations all across these worlds. But there's going to be a lot of procedurally generated landscapes. And, honestly, I'm kind of excited for this. Technically, Skyrim already did do some procedural generation. I'm pretty sure that uh, pre-release, they, you know, just... I guess just to get, like, a rough pass of the world... They procedurally generated a landscape, and then they went back and, like, kind of tweaked things. We're like, okay, this tree doesn't look right, let's kind of move it around, or move these rocks around. I'm pretty sure they did some of that for Skyrim. But they're not going to be able to do that for all 1,000 planets in Starfield. There's going to be a lot of... I guess I don't even know how to what to expect. Like, are these just going to be barren planets like No Man's Sky? Or are they going to be, like... Dozens of, like, named locations. Like, what are the procedural generation systems going to be? Because I think of No Man's Sky. That's It's going to be hard not to compare this to No Man's Sky. And, yeah, a new, a new No Man's Sky uh, update just got announced recently, so I kind of have that on my mind. But, in terms of No Man's Sky, there's procedurally... There's, like, outposts for enemies... And those are dotted all around these planets. So are there going to be things like that in Starfield? Where there's like a an outpost that doesn't have a name? It's just some random dungeon to clear. 
Are there going to be like hundreds of thousands of those across all those planets? I don't know. But I think they need to work out something to like fill out the scale because when you hear planet, it's got to be big. You know, you don't want it to be like a tiny little outcropping because you think about how big Skyrim is, how big Fallout 4 is. Those are big game worlds. I mean, they're still kind of small, but they're big. So, you know, even if they did make each planet the size of a Skyrim map, like, that's... that's big. That'd be a lot of empty space. You know, the density of Skyrim's map, they can't do that across all 1,000 planets. At least not with, you know, handcrafted locations, obviously. It's gonna have to be, like, some amount of, you know generated structures and dungeons and towns, maybe? I don't know. I have no idea what to expect from that. I guess, you know, on procedural generation, I really liked... I said this back in my Daggerfall video that I put together... Was this before I started making tours? I can't remember. It was either right before or right after I started making the video game world tour videos. But I talked about how I was hoping... Starfield would take inspiration from Daggerfall's world and like just the sheer scale of it. Because for those who don't know, Daggerfall is like, it's like a Minecraft world levels of size. Like maybe it's like a scale of magnitude off or something, but it's just incomprehensibly big. It is so much bigger than Skyrim and Fallout 4, you know, all those combined. But there's a lot of empty space in that world. And it's hard to think of what it would look like if they just threw in a bunch of random dungeons and just random shit to fill out the map. Is that what Starfield's going to be like? Or is it going to be like Daggerfall where there's like, here's a dungeon and then you have to walk in real time 10 minutes to get to another location, 20 minutes? Or are my expectations for the world in Starfield just completely off? Are these, are these thousand worlds, are these going to be more like the size of a, um, I'm trying to think of like a smaller Bethesda map. Like Solstheim in Skyrim. I beat the uh, Dragonborn DLC and you go to Solstheim there. Is each planet going to be the size of Solstheim? Because that's a, I mean, it's, it feels like a big map, but it's relatively small. You know, especially compared to Skyrim. But I can imagine them, Bethesda, kind of framing these worlds in a way where like okay you're not exploring the whole world this isn't a no man's sky you know we you have to keep the scope small somewhat you're not exploring the whole world you're just exploring a tiny little part of it where you get to see you know the big picture of like okay this little area is representative of the whole planet yeah i don't know i have no idea i guess that just kind of brings to mind like there's gonna be some procedurally generated like locations all around the worlds but how many named locations are there going to be like how many handcrafted locations dungeons towns everything in between how many handcrafted of those are there going to exist in skyrim fallout 4 there's roughly 300 to 400 you know it kind of was looking around online and it kind of depends on where you're reading but 300 to 400 handcrafted places in those games. And I think there's going to be more of those in uh, Starfield. 300 to 400 named locations. That's, that's a lot for Skyrim and Fallout 4. You walk and there's, if you look at the compass at the top and you do a 360, you know, there's always a location to go to. There's like always four or five different locations you could choose to go to. But in Starfield, I have a feeling that, you know, you could go to a planet and there might only be, like, two handcrafted locations. Maybe even none. You know, I'm maybe I'm underestimating how much a thousand is. A thousand is a big number. Of course, it's a lot less than No Man's Sky, which has practically no, you know, handcrafted bespoke locations. It's all like, okay, this is the, uh, Trader Outpost, and there are one of these on all the other billion planets, whatever. 
But is there going to be like a unique traitor outpost for planet number 785 in Starfield? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I feel like that's enough about the uh, world. Is there anything else I want to add on that? Yeah, I just... I hope you can better feel the scale of the worlds in Starfield. Because Skyrim, the location, like, it feels like a big world, but it's still relatively small. Like, you can make the walk from Whiterun to uh, Riverwood. You can do that in, like, gosh, five minutes? And that feels like it should be a much bigger distance, right? I talked about this in one of my Ocarina of Time videos, but it feels like open world games are often like abstractions of what the world actually is. So if you think about Skyrim and like how big, how big it exists in the video game, The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, think about how the landscape of Skyrim exists in that. How much bigger should the, the landmass of Skyrim be compared to its in-game representation? Does that make sense? Because you think about how big, like, the United States is. You know, that's a big-ass country. And then you scale that to the size of the world of Skyrim. There's, like, a discrepancy there. You know, cities are much further apart in real life than they are in Skyrim. So there's this sense of, like, abstraction where it's like, okay, you're not... This isn't the actual distance it would take to get there, but it's kind of like a concession made just so this video game can exist. And it, it's kind of annoying to experience that where it's like, okay... Oh, what was that one example? I, I saw this mentioned in a video, and it really struck me. I was like, oh, this actually is... This is like an actu accurate representation of that idea. Where in Skyrim, where you're going up to High Hrothgar to talk to the Greybeards. You know, people at the bottom of the mountain are talking about the 7,000 steps to reach the top of the mountain. And you're like, holy shit, this is going to take forever. It's going to be like a journey. I better prepare. So you get all your shit, you go prepare, you go craft some materials, you beef up your gear. And then you do, you start this arduous journey up the mountain. And you're really prepared for this to like take a while. And it doesn't. It doesn't take a while to reach the bottom of whatever that mountain's called to the top. I think somebody counted and it's only like 700. They were in game. They're talking about the 7000 step walk up to High Hrothgar, but it's actually like 700. That shows that like, OK, there's this like in the lore, this 7000 step walk up to High Hrothgar existed. But then when it came time to actually make the game, they're like, okay, we can't actually make this 7,000 steps. That would take forever for the player to do. So like, okay, let's scale it down a magnitude. Okay, this is more reasonable. But playing it, it's it doesn't feel like the journey it's made out to be. Maybe if it was double the size. You know, if they're feeling ballsy, triple it, quadruple it, make it feel like a super long journey. Give you points to where, like, okay, you reach, here's, like, the halfway point. You can fast travel to the halfway point. But make the journey from the first point to the second point. Make that, like, put challenges in there. I'm kind of getting off topic, but you want to feel the scale of these worlds. And specifically in Skyrim, I keep going back to that because that's what I've played recently. You don't really feel that scale. And I hope, I hope Starfield kind of brings that back to the Elder Scrolls series, because that existed in Daggerfall. And in Morrowind, it kind of got pushed away to like this, where the whole world is handcrafted. And they're kind of dabbling in procedural generation again, and I'm curious how that'll work out. All right, I said I was done talking about the world, and then I went on this huge tangent, but now I'm done. Now I'm going to talk about the gameplay. What are my hopes for Starfield's gameplay? I hope, like super big picture, I hope that you're forced to specialize more. Skyrim and Fallout 4 kind of simplified the character creation process in that, you know, skill points were completely gone from Fallout 4. That was a big part of like going back all the way to the first game where it's like, okay, you specialize in small guns, 
you know, you put in some points into that, and then you put some points into heavy weapons. You put some into sneak or whatever. In Fallout 4, those points don't exist. They exchanged it for a system where you get a perk point, and then you throw that into a perk tree for small guns or whatever. It was cool. You know, I, I talked about this in my uh, Skyrim rambling video, but I like that perks can give unique rewards. Where, like, when you're leveling up small guns, it's just like you getting better at using a weapon. But in Skyrim or Fallout 4, you know, when you're given a perk point to spend, you gotta choose, like, okay, I want this unique effect or this unique effect. It's not just, okay, you get incrementally better in this skill. I think that's a fun twist. But I just hope that they would kind of merge that, kind of bring that back. Bring back the incrementally getting better, but also the, uh... I guess perks have been around in Fallout for a long time. It's just that they recently got rid of, you know, skill points. In Skyrim, that completely did away with, like, all the specialization you can do with your character. Like, in Skyrim, all your character creation process is, is just... choosing the appearance of your character. And there are some tiny stats you can get from, like which race you choose, but you don't you don't choose a specialization at character creation in Skyrim. And that's not necessarily a problem, because Skyrim really wants you to kind of figure out who you want to be during gameplay. And that's a really cool system, but it kind of hurts like the... I feel like specializing in role-playing games... It strengthens your bond with the game. I said I also said this in my Skyrim rambling video, but you can really become a jack of all trades in Skyrim. And it's easy to kind of just forget that you're like you're supposed to be a character in this world. I never when I play these games, I very rarely ever think of like, okay, this is a character, th these are his motivations, this is his background story. And I don't use those to influence choices in the game. I'm just like, okay, how can I level up in the best way so I can see the most content going forward? I don't treat the game as a world. I treat it as a game. And I hope Starfield really forces you to specialize. I hope that it doesn't let you become a jack-of-all-trades. Because in Skyrim, you really can do that. You can do archery, you can do magic, you can do swords. It'll get a little bit hard, because... You know, level scaling, and if you're spreading yourself out so thin, you won't do as good damage in one aspect. But you can just turn down the difficulty, boom, you'll be fine. I hope Starfield forces you to specialize a bit more. They've already shown that you're going to be able to... There's a bit more going on at character creation, where you got to pick traits. And that's really cool. That will that was like an old thing in Fallout. Gosh, they got rid of that for Fallout 3. That wasn't in Fallout 3. It was in New Vegas, but they cut that from the uh, old Black Isle fallouts. So yeah, it's cool that they're bringing that back. Hopefully they bring that back for the new fallout. But traits are a really cool thing where you get to focus your character at character creation. I'm trying to think of some of the ones from Fallout. I guess the simplest example in Fallout was you'll get plus five points for skills that are non-combat related. And you'll lose five skill points for combat related skills. So that kind of pushes you towards a non-compatible playstyle. Uh, and there's others where it's like, you'll do more damage when moving. You know, stuff like that to just kind of really tweak how you want to play. And tweak the type of character you're creating. Because, you know, it's character creation. You want to be able to really focus in and make a character. Not just like a, a vessel for you to experience the world. I want to be forced to create a character that I then experience the world through. I don't know if any of that made sense, but I'll leave it at that. Um, I guess outside of, like, character creation, this is, you know, this is kind of simple, but I just hope the weapon variety is good. You know, these first-person shooter Bethesda games, they're really made by the weapons you find, and, you know, just the loot you find. Fallout 4 had some cool weapons. Like, the gunplay in Fallout 4 was really good. They really bumped up from, uh... 
I guess the last one they worked on was Fallout 3. You know, from Fallout 3 to 4, the gunplay is so much better. So, it's it's amazing. It's, like, actually good. Like, the gunplay in Fallout 3 New Vegas was... I'd barely call it serviceable. Barely. But in Fallout 4, it's, like, genuinely good. Like, the recoil and the impact and the sounds, the animations, they just all felt so raw. And they got that core down. And where Fallout 4 kind of fell short for me is that the weapon variety isn't as good. Now, they kind of made up for that in, like, the weapon modding system, where it was, like, these weapon platforms. I'm trying to think of examples. Like, the pipe weapons. I hated pipe weapons. I hated seeing pipe weapons in the game. But it was really cool that you could turn, like, a pipe pistol into a pipe rifle or into a pipe sniper. I'm pretty sure you could do that. Maybe I'm just imagining, but I'm pretty sure you could do that. Now, some weapons were a bit more, like, set in what they were built for. Like, the 10mm pistol, you could add a automatic fire for it instead of a semi-automatic. But, you know, it's still a pistol. You can't turn a 10mm pistol into a rifle or sniper rifle. The modding was really cool in that game, but... The base weapons themselves, I found myself wanting more. Because when you play these games, you know, you're you're expressing yourself through the weapons you choose. And in Fallout 4, I didn't really like a lot of the weapons. Just like, like they did good damage, but I didn't like how they looked and felt. Like the combat rifle or the shotgun. I didn't like how those felt. You know, Fallout 3, I really liked the combat shotgun in that game. Just the way it looked. Even though I was dunking on that game's gunplay earlier, the combat shotgun in Fallout 3 felt good. You know, I guess it feels good in Fallout 4, but I just didn't like the vibes of it, the aesthetics of the weapons in that game. And it felt like there weren't enough. So for Starfield, I really hope they work on the variety. I want to see more types of weapons that I can use to express myself. I'm, I'm sure they got that down. You know, this is so far detached from, like, okay, this is an assault rifle. You know, they're going to be using energy weapons. All kinds of futuristic stuff in this game. So, I don't even know what to expect going into this. I'm excited to see what kind of weird weapons I'll find. Okay, dipping out of the gameplay and onto the story. This is one that's I honestly don't have a lot to say about because I don't know much about Starfield's story. Any of the trailers I did watch that had story stuff, I don't remember anything about it. I read like a tiny bit of an article going over like the history of Starfield. Like uh, the in-world history, but I don't remember anything from that. Yeah, I don't... I have no expectations for the story. And I kind of like that. I like that I... I don't know what to expect. I don't have preconceived notions about what the game's gonna be. I guess in terms of quality... Do I trust Bethesda to do a good job with the story? I don't know. Um, Fallout 4 wasn't the worst. I feel like it got a lot of negative press in regards to like the narrative and the writing. But I think a lot of that was really focused at the dialogue system. I'm trying to think if like... Like, I think the story was okay. I guess there were some bad, like... I don't want to say bad, there were just like some weird nitpicks you could make. I guess some, you know, bigger scope issues with the way the narrative was handled. What about Skyrim's story? How did that go? Um, I guess Skyrim's the same way in that the core story was good, but if you thought about it for too long, you'd kind of find some nitpicks and just like some weird things, problems that are hard to shake. So I don't know, um tentatively optimistic in regards to the story um i really hope they work on a way to allow for more character types in the story because skyrim and fallout 4 were really bad at like okay you are this character this is your role in the world and you can't deviate from this now you can have some aspects of your character that are like up to your own headcanon in fallout 4 you are a parent you have a military history. Those are, like, 
core parts of the character that you're playing as, that as Bethesda wrote them. You know, you can have all kinds of headcanon you want, but you can't shake the fact that you are a parent, you have a military background, and you are concerned for your kids' well-being. You have to go out and search for them. You can choose to ignore those as you please, but you're fighting the game at that point. You know, the game wants you to care about that. It wants you to be this concerned parent that's on the search for their kid. And same as Skyrim. You know, you are established as the Dragonborn. You are pushed really early on to, like, you see this dragon attack, and you're like, okay, go to Riverwood, tell of the dragon attack. Okay, I'll go do that. You do that, okay. Go to Whiterun, tell of the dragon attack. You do that, okay, go to High Hrothgar, okay, do that. You figure out you're the Dragonborn, it's just all this... This momentum is pushing you into being one type of character. And I really hope Starfield can find a way to, like, get you into the main story without pigeonholing you so much in terms of character creation and role-playing. Because like I've said, I'm not the type to really role-play in these types of games, but... I think they're better when they allow for that. Where players can create their own headcanon. And they have this image of the character in their mind. But they don't have to fight the game. The game works in tandem with them. And they're not at odds for each other. Where the game's saying like, no, you are a dragonborn. And you're saying, no, no, I'm not. And yeah, I hope they figure out something for that. Because that's kind of been a problem with recent Bethesda games. Alright, this is a bit of a... A curveball. You know, we've talked about the world, the gameplay, and the story. But I want to talk about the thing I'm... I don't even know if I want to say the most excited for, but the most curious about. Is building. I really like building in games. Especially in these types of games. It allows you to really find your place in this world and express yourself through... You know, how you decorate a home. So they first dabbled with this in, at least, you know, okay, I say, when I say building, I mean, player houses existed in, you know, Morrowind, Daggerfall, probably Arena. You could have, like, a player place to call your own. But I, I guess in Fallout 3, kind of, but in Skyrim, it was really pushed where it's like, okay, this is the home building expansion, and you can build your own place. And in that game, you weren't I mean, I guess you were building a home, but you weren't placing things yourself. You were going to a workbench and saying, okay, I have two wood, one stone, a lock. Build me this chest. And when you click A to build a chest, the game automatically places down a chest in the world. It's like, this is chest number six in this room, and you can't move it. It's just, the chest exists right there. Once you build everything in the house, it looks the same for every player. Like every little item is pre-placed by the developer. It looks nice, admittedly. You know, I built my house in a... My Hearthfire house all the way up in the north of Skyrim. I forget what that area is called, but... I built it up there and it looks nice. You know, I got all the interior things placed, but... It doesn't feel like my house. It feels like a house that... The developers built for me. I guess I can only say that in retrospect, because Fallout 4 really, really gave you the freedom to make a location your own. That system of, like, pre-placed items where you have to give the materials to then make that item materialize, that's gone. In Fallout 4, you collect junk, you know, you collect wood and all that out in the world. But then you, when you get to one of these specialized building locations, you enter building mode. And then you place down the items yourself. You know, you place a chest here. You know, you place walls all around here. You build yourself a little fortress, even. It doesn't have to be just a house. You can build anything in Fallout 4. That's so cool. I love that system. You know, building might have a bunch of problems in Fallout 4 with, you know, the settlements and all that. But just the core building of, like, getting a building a house and placing down items where you want them to be. That's so cool. And they've shown that they're doing that in Starfield. I don't know exactly what the settlement stuff is going to be like in Starfield. Settlements in Fallout 4, you know, this is where the 
building system was kind of focused in that you build settlements out in the world for people to... for NPCs to inhabit. And they're kind of... they just kind of do their own thing there. They tend to crops, they get water, and they just hang out. It's fun to build them, don't get me wrong, but it's fun to build like one or two. Once you get more than that, you know, once you get into the dozens, it's, it's just not fun. You can't give everyone the same attention that you could, you know, the first one you find. Like, I'm trying to think, like, I built out a pretty good network in my, during my uh, most recent Fallout 4 playthrough. But I didn't do, I, I did barely anything other than just, like, put down five beds, put crops down, that's it. You know, I didn't build, like, buildings and fortresses for, like, enemy attacks. I didn't do any of that. Just give it the bare necessities, get out of there. Settlements really did require babysitting in Fallout 4. And for Starfield, I'm kind of hoping for some more, like, autonomous settlements. Like, get it so they can defend themselves. Get it so they'll build, like, things themselves. You know, what was that one, uh, Fallout 4 mod? Sim settlements? Make it kind of like that, where settlements just kind of exist on their own once you get them started out. You know, even if I choose not to engage with the settlement stuff in Starfield, I'm assuming there is. I don't know for certain. I'm pretty sure there's settlement stuff. Where you can manage, like, groups of NPCs for, like, locations on worlds. Even if I choose not to engage with any of that, I'm still really excited to just build my home base. Put all these chests where I want it, decorate it how I want it. Make it my home. Yeah, I'm excited for that. And this is kind of a last minute addition, but something I really... I realized I haven't heard much about regarding Starfield is modding. This game has to have mods, right? I haven't heard them talk about, you know, creation kit stuff for this at all. I'm assuming it's going to be there, but what's it going to look like? Like, in a Skyrim, Bethesda was pushing for, like, mods in the game. Like, there was a mod browser in-game. They're hosting mods on, like, official Bethesda servers now. So you can mod games on console. Admittedly, it's less free. You know, there's less stuff you can mod on the consoles. But it's still, like, it's a great step. And is that going to be in Starfield? Are there going to be mods on consoles for Starfield? I don't know. I saw that someone posted a screenshot of the Starfield main menu, and I didn't see a mods option on there like you see on Skyrim. And I didn't see a creation club option like you do in Skyrim. Is the creation club going to exist in Starfield? Gosh, I don't know. I kind of hope not, because the creation club is just... It just sucks. Honestly, like... Maybe there's a world in which, maybe this isn't my place to talk, because I haven't engaged with a lot of the Creation Club stuff in Skyrim. I haven't at all in Fallout 4. But in Skyrim, I engaged with the Saints and Seducers content that was like included with the Special Edition for free. You didn't have to pay for the Anniversary Edition. And that stuff was unbalanced. It was difficult. It just didn't fit with the base game. Which, I guess, you know, the Creation Club is still a mod. You know, however Bethesda wants to frame it, it's still mods for the game. And mods don't necessarily have to fit in with the main game. But if you're paying money for it, it kind of gets a little different. You know, if I'm paying five bucks for this quest that gives me a powerful gun at the end, I, I can see the Bethesda wanting to make that gun super powerful. And then when you get that gun, it's like, okay... I don't want to use any other gun now. So the entire progression of like, okay, you find this super powerful weapon, then you tweak it a little bit to make it even more powerful. Just the whole loop of like, looting for better weapons and tweaking, that's gone when you get the super powerful, I don't know, Goss rifle or something in Fallout 4. I know that was a Creation Club thing. But I've heard horror stories of some of the Creation Club stuff in Skyrim where you can get super powerful spells and armor really early on. It's crazy how they just threw out the balance of Skyrim when it came to the Creation Club stuff in the Anniversary Edition. 
you know, if they do Creation Club stuff with Starfield, that's fine. Sure. But down the line, if they do do an Anniversary Edition, I really, really hope that all that shit is bundled into the game better. I really hope that they take the time to balance the game to make sure, like, okay, if we're going to include all this Creation Club stuff into Starfield going forward, we want this to be as good as the base game. And they didn't do that with Skyrim. And I can only hope they do that with Starfield, if Creation Club's even a thing. I don't know if they've even announced it. Maybe it won't be. Maybe they're done with Creation Club. I have no idea. Maybe that was just a weird experiment. I hope so. All right. What are my feelings as we approach Starfield's release? I'm optimistic. Bethesda has taken a lot of shit over the years. There have been a lot of video critiques about where Skyrim and Fallout 4 have kind of fallen short. And they've had a lot of time to really just take this stuff to heart. And some of it they have. Some of it you can see that they've taken to heart, like the, uh, the dialogue choices. Fallout 4. Was Fallout 4? I guess Fallout 76. But Fallout... I think the main team from Fallout 4 went straight on to Starfield. I think Fallout 76 was kind of a side team. But from Fallout 4 to Starfield, they've really improved from, like, the... the four dialogue choices when you're talking to someone. I think they've shown that they're like, okay, you're not just seeing hates newspapers or loves newspapers. You get a bit more of what you're going to say when you click a dialogue option. They've already taken that to heart of like, okay, we saw you didn't like that. We got you. We saw you didn't like the voice protagonist. Good. We'll cut it. Is that cut? Is there a voice protagonist in Starfield? I don't actually know. I haven't, I, I can't remember from the, tr there's no way. There's no way. I can't remember, but there's no way. There's no way they'd do that after the stink they had with Fallout 4 and the voice protagonist. But even if they do, you know, they took to heart about the how dialogue is presented to the player. So you know what you're going to say when you... It doesn't just say hate newspapers and you have no idea what that means. And I guess just overall, I'm excited to explore a new Bethesda universe. You know, because when The Elder Scrolls 6 comes out, when Fallout 5 comes out, you know what a Fallout game is. You know what a Elder Scrolls game is. You know there's going to be tropes that exist in those in the previous games that you'll see in this next one. But Starfield is just a blank slate. They're kind of they're probably picking and choosing parts from Fallout and Skyrim and just random ideas out of their ass and throwing it into this game to give it its own identity. But it's going to be very cool to see what they've taken from the Fallout series and the Skyrim series and to see how they kind of meshed them together. And they just want to see what they've learned from those, you know? Because it's been a while. I think they've... When was the Elder Scrolls started? Like in... I don't even know, like the 90s, the 80s? Probably the 90s. Have they said this is their first new IP since the Elder Scrolls? I vaguely remember that being a talking point. Maybe they had another series. But it's their first new IP in a very long time, and I'm curious to see how this will go for them. So I'm excited. Maybe a little bit cautiously excited, but still excited. All right, so that's that. Um, I guess in regards to main channel videos on Starfield, I'm going to try to put out a video pretty close to Starfield's release. I'm going to try to get out a tour of the game. Uh, it's obviously not going to be a super in-depth one, like covering all kinds of locations all across the game worlds, because I'm not getting it super ahead of release. I don't even know if I'm going to get it ahead of release. I might just be getting alongside the uh, Super Deluxe Edition, whatever it's called. So I'm going to work on that as quickly as I can, get out maybe a relatively shorter episode, and then I'll play it a good long while, put out a video or two maybe in the short term, and then, you know, I'll give it the good video game world tour shakedown. You know, we're really going to explore it and look for cool areas. So yeah. Look out for those. Check out, subscribe to the main channel. Also subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That's it. Uh, as always, leave a suggestion in the comments if you got a future topic idea for these videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.